another time with the integer assistive tutor. In today's class, we'll be taking the course Elements of Management 2, and we will be particular about discussing the evolution of management. Without further ado, let's up straight into it. Okay, I'm just going to switch this up now. Okay, we have boss 106 and taking the evolution evolution of management evolution of management and before we go into details of things let's see what we have in the comment section okay so we have um not bed of roses says good afternoon sir good afternoon we have semi solar says good afternoon sir good afternoon we have um to says good afternoon good afternoon mr to we have titi layo mr layo good afternoon it's great to have you on the stream here we have miss precious good afternoon it's great to have you on the stream we have okay good afternoon everyone Good afternoon, you're welcome. That's Dami, Miss Dami. We have patient, Miss Patient says good afternoon. It's good to have you on the stream. And um, Mr. Linus says good afternoon. And Miss Joy says good afternoon. It's good to have you all on the stream. So um let's just go into the other things. Now, what about evolution of management? The first thing we are taking down is that management is as old as human organization management is as old as human miss blessing she's not on the stream mr alfred um who else that was in the morning okay mr tilayo always they yeah, always punctual mr tilayo was yeah, Miss uh Miss Stalinus wasn't in the class on the after in the morning. Okay, um I think um um okay, Simisola was in the class in the morning. Miss Joy couldn't make it, I guess. Alright. So we have management is as old as human organization management is as old as human organization human organization evolution let's forget when we talk about evolution evolution what does it signify talking about evolution you know we're talking you're looking at the process by which different now the origination the or living organisms you no know, the development process the gradual development of something or we'll talk about evolution gradual development of something we are looking at the gradual development of management so now we say the very first thing is that management is as good as human organization so that's our very first point management is as old as human organization okay so we have um we have that as that and we shall proceed now the principles guiding operations you know the principles guiding operations of managers evolve over time now speaking of the evolution of management the principles employed in management evolves over time meaning that as human beings are changing as human beings are getting better so does the principle of management keep evolving keep getting better 
the principles employed by management evolves over time. That is what it means. So we have in the pre-industrial period, management was practiced by various parts of the world, including Africa. You know when we say pre and when we say post, pre is before and post is after. You no, know, well then I think in my polytechnic day when I took this political science course, uh say so I remember using pre-independent and post-independent. I want to talk about things that happened in the pre-colonial era and post-colonial era, things that happened before the colonial era, like the way rules and regulation, the rule of law on ground before the colonial masters came and the rule, um, uh, rule of law after they had came and left. So we have the pre is before and we have the post which is after. So now in the pre industrial period mindfulness was practiced by various parts of the world including africa now in the pre pre-industrial period pre-industrial period management was practiced by various parts of the world practiced by various parts of the world including Africa including Africa Africa was not left out during the pre-industrial period management was being practiced by um, by various parts of the world now the well-known kingdom of Ghana, Mali, Songa are known to have had a wonderful administrative system. The way at which these people run their activities before industrial period is said to be that they have good and wonderful administrative system. Now, well-known kingdom of Mali, so we have impressive administrative system by impressive wonderful administrative system wonderful admin system we have ghana we have mali we have um the third one which is um songa Songa, Mali, we have Ghana, we have Songa, they are known to have had a wonderful administrative system. Now, in particular, Ghana, judiciary system, for example, was well organized and managed. Ghana's judicial system had both a lower court and court of appeal. So, by, by venture, you come across that judicial system has a lower court and a court of appeal. You know, that's Ghana. Ghana judicial system had a lower court and a court of appeal. So, you know, when lower court judges case and you are you feel you are not comfortable with, you go to court of appeal, they review the case and your case can be looked into again. So, Ghana in particular has a very nice judicial system. Ghana judicial system Ghana judicial system was well organized well organized with a lower court and the court of appeal the lower court and the court of appeal so Ghana had a very nice judicial system, well organized, with a lower court and a court of appeal. Now, King of Ghana put up to 20,000 warriors in the field within the short time. This, this, their system is so much organized that the King of Ghana can afford to put up 
20,000 warriors in the field within a short time. This is as a result of how organized and how wonderful Ghana 16 was then. Now, lucrative trade between Ghana and other countries such as Spain, Morocco, and all North um, African countries. Because of the way they manage their activities, because of the way they organize how they do things, they were able to run lucrative, they were able to learn lucrative trade. Ghana synonymous. Ghana synonymous to lucrative. Lucrative. Synonymous to lucrative trade between Spain, Morocco, between Spain, I think it's a double C, not a double R, and the Morocco, Spain, Morocco, and all North Africa countries. All North African countries so because of how effective because of how effective they run their administration and um, the way they run their business it gave them the room to all to organize to run lucrative trade between spain morocco and all african continents all african countries so the shops of local now during this time during this era the shops of local crafts craftsmen dotted the marketplace the shop the shop of local craftsmen is populated everywhere in the marketplace okay i should take the last one again Ms. Mata is good to have you join us okay she i should take the last one again Just a moment. Okay. I'm trying to adjust so I can see my see the questions from here. Okay, Miss Perky says I should take the last one again. Now, Ghana, because of the way they organize, because of how organized the administration is because of how organized they are they had good economy and this as a result of this they were able to run lucrative trade ghana is synonymous or is tantamous to lucrative trade this is pre-industrial period let's not forget we are looking at the evolution of management ghana lucrative trade synonymous to our tantamount to the creative trade between Spain, Morocco, and all African countries. So we have that as that. And we have the shops of local craftsmen dotted the marketplaces. So you have a lot of craftsmen. So it seems uh it seems like the best thing the the, the 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 one thing they do best is craftsmanship. So that's why we that's why it is said that the shop of craftsmen dotted the marketplaces, meaning that they are in those days craftsmanship is like the major business most of them do. And uh, we have that as that. Now what is said of Ghana can also be said of Mali. What is said of Ghana can also be said of, of Mali. What is said of Ghana 
can also set up Mali, meaning that the way Ghana is very organized, so does Mali too. That's how they are well organized. So now we are looking at how management evolved in, you know, we've been looking at how it's evolved in Ghana, how they have been able to do their trade, and also in Mali. So now we are moving somewhere else. We are moving a bit wider now. We are moving towards Egypt. Evolution of management. Now, in Egypt, Now, in Egypt, they construct pyramids, irrigation projects, and build up the and building of canals. Egypt, we have pyramids, irrigation, irrigation system or irrigation project, and build canals egyptians are masters in this field building of pyramids irrigation projects and you know building of car uh, canals and with from research you know, this pyramid is a very good source of storage and irrigation process is basically for their farming system it goes well and the building of canal is more of like as well so they are masters in building these things and which really help their administration and how the management of their day-to-day -day activities and the country as a whole runs. Now, pharaohs and their viziers, pharaohs and their viziers, managers, now pharaohs and their visas, and the visas of pharaoh is his manager who plans, organize, direct, and control the work of subordinates. On behalf of Pharaoh is visas. Visas is visas. Okay, it's visas. Visas. Pharaoh visas. Managers who planned. They are managers. Their managers who plan, control, organize, direct, and you know, they plan. They plan, they organize, and direct. They organize, they direct, they direct, and control work. Control work. You know, I believe this is an example of what Joseph was doing there in Potiphar's house. So he helps him plan, although before he eventually moved to Pharaoh's um, palace, where he became the second in command in the land of Egypt. So basically, he helps Pharaoh plan, organize, direct, control, work of other subordinates. So we have that as that. So we have management of enterprises was also practiced. Now we are look, moving on a little bit to the Babylonians. The Babylonians. The Babylonians. The Babylonians. Practice what we call management of enterprises management of enterprises now the romans and the greek also were engaged in commerce management of enterprises meaning that they have trade in multiple places management of enterprises they are also dexteric with business with management of trade and also businesses now we have but the babylonians um they got involved in what we call management of enterprises. They practice management of enterprises. Practice management of 
enterprises. The Babylonians practice what we call management of enterprise. Why the Romans and Greeks got engaged in commerce? Commerce is a bit large. Commerce is way above management of enterprises, but commerce is wider than all of that. So um, the Romans and the Greeks. Romans and Greeks. You know, they got engaged, they got engaged in commerce. Engaged in commerce. Engaged in commerce. So we have that as that. Now, we've been able to talk about, you know, how management evolves amongst Ghana, African country, countries, we have we have Ghana, we have Mali, we have Egypt, and we will talk about Babylon, Rome, and Greece, and uh, Greek. So now I want to talk about the Industrial Revolution. Now we'll be hearing Industrial, Industrial Revolution in the course of this course, but what does Industrial Revolution really signify? What does it really mean? Now, now. This is a period, or this was a period of intellectual awakening. Please take note of that. Industrial period. If you are here to smash the like button, you have to smash the like button. If you are on this stream and you are here to subscribe to the channel, do all to subscribe to the channel as well. Industrial evolution evolution the main thing about industrial evolution is all about intellectual awakening intellectual awake intellect no no i think i it's intellectual awakening that is the e awakening make the pardon intellectual awakening that is what industrial evolution is characterized which is characterized with industrial awakening so we have um we have that as that just a moment okay so i think we are good to go now, when scientific and technological discoveries of Galileo, Watt, Gilbert, and Alvey, and other prominent genius gave rise to industrial revolution, a lot of things were discovered. A lot of amazing technological and scientific discoveries were made during the industrial era. A lot of them were made during the industrial era so um it's made it made um it made a lot of impact during this time so we have you know um the discovery technological and what made the industrial industrial era industrial revolution what made it significance what made it significance what led to the intellectual awakening what led to it is the technological and scientific 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 and technological scientific and technological discoveries uh, there, there are a lot of discoveries done by a lot of great minds, but just few among them, scientific and technological discoveries of, of, we have Galileo, Galileo, 
we have Watts, we have Gilbert, we have um, Watts, we have Gilbert, we have Watts, we have Gilbert, we have Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. Yeah, so we have just these are a few ones among others that made a, uh, that made significant discoveries significant scientific and technological discoveries so we have um that as that so um let's proceed okay so we have um now one of the significance again I think I might erase this very quickly. Okay, so now another major significance, another major advantage of industrial revolution is that it gave birth to accelerated resources accumulation and the growth of large scale of enterprises it was a time of eye opening it was an eye opener a time of great discoveries so we another point is that our accelerated rate of resources accelerated accelerated rate of resources accumulation accelerated rate of resources accumulation yes accelerated rate of yes you accumulate accelerated rate of resource accumulation it's one of another major advantage and accumulation of now the growth of large scale enterprise all like enterprises began to boom mr alfred you two came late i've already asked of you before you came but you came late so now a lot of industries that were struggling all of a sudden they began to boom in this industrial revolution during this period of industrial revolution, where eyes were beginning to be opened, veils were beginning to be torn, and people were beginning to discover things, industry started to boom. Struggling industry started to expand. Resources, the rate at which resources become, the, uh, the rate at which, at which resources were accumulated increased, it skyrocketed. A lot of things happened in the industrial era. So we have um we have that as that so we have um we have that as that All right I'm going to go through my notes. Now, concept and principles on how to manage a business effectively now we have some certain method and views principles at which the principle to manage business effectively now we have the scientific management movement now 
we have the human relations school and we have the administrative school and the modern approach of management. All right, just a minute. I'm trying to fix my material here. Okay. Now, I want us to consider the scientific management movement the scientific management movement. we're going to be talking about the scientific management movement. now the scientific management school or scientific management movement now place special emphasis upon production let's not forget we are giving out the points here but I'm, we are not following the material dogmat dogmatically, but we're just giving out essential points. So we have scientific management school or the scientific management movement. Please emphasis on production this is what they're about they place emphasis on production scientific management intend to bring about a complete mental revolution which must occur in the mind of workmen and management now the scientific school the scientific school scientific management movement all this is the same umbrella let's not be confused now the movement now is particular about bringing about a complete mental revolution complete mental revolution a complete mental revolution which must occur in the mind of workmen and management in the mind of workmen and management in the mind of workmen and management scientific management school so now we have Frederick Taylor is often referred to as the father of scientific management scientific management that is very i can't remember how many times this question came out in the, in the tme and even in the exam Frederick Frederick taylor Frederick taylor is the far to us is often referred to as the father of scientific management father of scientific management often referred to as the father of scientific management now according to taylor taylor according to him the essence of scientific management one to increase output don't forget we said this school is particular about production 
which is still school of management. Now, they are what they are particular about the um, scientific management. Scientific management is particular about increments in the output of an average employee. Improve the efficiency of management. Increment in the average performance of an employee. Increase in the output of the average employee. Increase in the output. And we have improved the efficiency of management. Now, Frederick advocated placing worker on a piece of work in order to encourage them to learn more. That is specialization. Place a worker on a piece of work. What you do repeatedly, you get better at it. So that is what Taylor advocates here in the school of management. Place one worker on a piece of work in order to encourage him, in order to encourage them to earn more. Now, everything Taylor says or all his arguments is all about careful selection of employees and the development of employees in order for them to reach their optimal potential. Educate them, educate men to scientific method uh, that has been tested and proven. Now, let's not go into all this. It's quite much. But you need to understand that Frederick Taylor, Frederick, uh, Frederick I think it's Frederick Winston Taylor. Let me be sure. I think that's his full name. Frederick Winston Taylor. I remember very well. Frederick Okay, Frederick with Winslow, not Winston. Frederick Winslow Taylor. Okay. Okay, just a moment. Frederick. Yes, Frederick Winslow Taylor. Frederick. Winslow Taylor, but in the material is just Frederick Taylor. Yes, Frederick Winslow Taylor is the name in full. All what is about is that all what Frederick is about is just all what is about is just increase the outputs of the average employee and improve the efficiency of the management now for you to increase the output of an average employee he has to be trained he has to be placed on a job he has to be introduced to scientific methods you have to be educated you have to be you know um yes he has to be trained he has to be carefully selected and placed on a job and he has to be carefully selected and placed on a job and he has to get better at what he does so just those two things are wrapped around what Frederick Taylor is saying so um, I, I believe we are good to go or is there any for me to write that out is there any for me to write that out? That is Frederick Taylor's contribution to the School of Management Science. Are we good to go? Is there any for me to write that out? Is there any for me to write that on the board? Okay. So let's proceed. Very well. Let's proceed. All right. Okay. Um, so we have Charles Babbage happens to be the forerunner. Charles Babbage, who happens to be the forerunner of Frederick. Charles Babbage, who happens to be the forerunner 
of Charles Babbage also made himself known. It's just now you came late. Now, Charles Babbage as a foreigner, and a foreigner is said to be somebody who came before you, somebody who was there before you, like your answer, somebody that precedes. Like your ancestor now, Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage. Okay, it's a double B. Charles Bab Babbage. Charles Babbage happens to be the forerunner of Frederick Taylor, also made his contribution to the field of management science. Now, Charles Babbage said, division of labor and specialization. He stressed the need for dividing and assigning labor on the basis of skill. Division of labor, division of labor, specialization. Let's not forget, Frederick's own was all about um, improving the man, improving, improving um, the management, and also he was particular about increasing the output. That's for Frederick, output and develop management. But here with Charles, Charles said division of labor and specialization. That's what Charles is all about. So we have that as that. Charles also said something about automatic operation. He stressed the need for replacing manual operation by automatic machinery. Automatic. Automatic. Operation. He said something about automatic operation, whereby it is better to replace manual operation with automatic one. So those three things that Charles Babbage added to the evolution or to the school of management science. Now we have Frank Gilbert. Frank Gilbert is known for his work on time and motion study. Frank Gilbert. Frank Frank Gilbert. Known for his work on for his work on time and motion. Known for his work on time and motion. Time and known for his work on time and motion, motion studies, motion studies, time and motion studies. So we have that as that. Now, invented something. Invented something called the tablings. Tablings. I think I need to use this. Now, Gilbert, Frank, Frank Gilbert invented what is called tablings. Tablings. Now, 
Tablings is said to be 17 basic elements in on the job motion. 17 basic elements. 17 basic elements in on the job motion. On the job yes invented that on the job motion 17 basic elements Frank Gilbert invented that so let's take note of all these points According to our material, it says 17. So we are going to go with our material. But according to my research here, there are actually 18 of them. So um, there are actually 18 of them. But nevertheless, let's go for what we have in our material. Okay on the job you have on the job yeah laws of motion about 17 according to what we have here okay let's um, proceed so we have that as that now Gilbert spelled backwardly. One amazing thing about Gilbert again is that he spells backwardly. So that's that for Gilbert. Now the first principles of management were advocated by a French engineer and geologist. The first principle of management were advocated by a French engineer and a philosopher. A French engineer and a geologist, I mean, the first principle, first principles of management was, was um, advocated by a French engineer and ge geologist, advocated by a French engineer and um, geologist. A French engineer and geologist. Also, we also have that we have that as that. Okay, let's proceed to the next page. Now, also, you should note that another person gave what we call 14 principles of management. 14 principles. 14 principles of management. No other person than Henry Fayol. Okay, it's, it's actually Henry, not Henry. Henry. Okay. <laughs> Henry Fayol. Henry Fayos. Henry Fayos. I beg your pardon. Henry Fayol. Every every fire, fourteen principles of management was given by every fires. So we have um, that as that. All right. So we may move on.
Now, someone wrote an article about management theory jungle. Someone wrote an article about the theory, the management theory jungle. The theory. The management theory, the management theory, jungle. This was written by Harold Kuhn. Harold, hmm. you don't want to joke with these names, please. I remember all these names came out. Coons, please don't joke with these names. Write them clearly, where you can you can easily catch them. Coons, N T Z, Harold, Harold Coons. Please don't joke with these names. Take note of all these names. So we are close to the end of today's class. We're going to take just one more management process. Now the school of management process. The school of management process. School of management process. Now, this school of thought sees management as a process of getting things done through and with people operating in the organization groups. The process of getting things done Press of getting things done through and with people. True and with people. True and with people operating in the in operating in organized group. People operating in organized. group so now the basic thing about this school is that this school is just particular about the press of getting things done through people the school of okay i think we've erased that the school of management okay uh, the school of scientific management also just a moment School of Management Science place specific emphasis on production. Please let's not mix it up. School of Management Science place ex uh, emphasis on production. School of Management Process places emphasis on getting things done through people. Now, 14 principles of management done by Eri Fayol. Management theory juggle was also done by Harold Kuhn's in his article. Okay, so we have um, we have got as that, and Erifayo is referred to as the father, often referred to as the father of management science. So um, I believe that will with that we are done for today. We have Frank Gilbert, who is known for his work on time and motion studies please let's note all this and charles babbage who happens to be the forerunner of frederick 
Winston Taylor. Winslow Taylor. You know, he did um, also talk about division of labor and placing a worker on a job. Division of labor spoke about that as well. And he stressed assigning now one dividing and assigning labor on the basis of skills specialization design and divide work on the basis of skill and also said something about automatic operation so we have that as that and we talked about we talked about just a moment And we talked about we talked about Mali, we talked about Egypt, we talked about Ghana, you know, we talked about how all these people function as before the industrial era. And we also and we also talked about um and we also talked about what the industrial revolution was all about. And Miss Perky says I should take I should take the school of mind men process again. Now the school of mind men process lays place emphasis. They place emphasis on getting things done through people. Uh, they place emphasis on getting things done through and with people operating in organized groups. They place emphasis on getting things done through and with people in organized group so that's what the school of process is all about so in our subsequent class we're talking about other schools and um from there we'll take it on forward so um the discussion is on and i want to believe that enough that we are already processing our registration if you would have that done fine and it would also wait your results to be released is still a good one you can take your time and wait for the results to be released the results will be released anytime soon so let's let's be positive and let's be expectant of our first semester results thank you very much everyone do well to update and submit your notes to the classes and um, that'll be all for now I look forward to seeing you later this evening when we are we are taking M, uh, MKT 108 as marketing by that should be by um, five o'clock. I Mr. Alfred, I'm not sure I understand what you said. Can you please put that correctly so I can go through it so I can respond to it. So um, we have that as that. Okay, what about Nigeria? <laughs> what about Nigeria? Well, according to the material, you know, we, the, according to the course, there are no records of Nigeria, but, you know, definitely Nigeria too was doing well before the, okay, there, there was actually no record of what Nigeria was like during the pre, you know, the pre, um, industrial era, or maybe we, sh we can make our research. So I will give this one to us as assignment, but definitely before what I uh, what I'm starting off is about the pre the, the pre colonial era and the post colonial era for Nigeria. And you know, we have some certain parts of the country like the Yorubas, how they are uh, ruling and running their administration. But we have the Obas, we have the um, Ogbonis, we have the Obas, we have the Ogbonis, we have the the um, chief makers, we have the Ariel or Kankafu, the head of the warriors. Uh, you talk management in Ghana. Yes, management in Ghana, according to the material. You know, yeah, emphasis were placed on Ghana and Mali. So uh, they made trade with Spain, you know, all these places, but we had no record, you know, of things like this. But we can make emphasis, we can make our research, definitely. So, um, I'm giving this as an assignment to um, everyone in the class, everyone on this stream. Um, in our next class or before our next class, let's have the history 
in detail of what management was like in Nigeria during the um, during the revolution, industrial revolution era. So that's the assignment. Let me write it on the board. That's our assignment. Thank you for that, Mr. Alfred. Let's take that as an assignment. Okay. Assignment. Elucidate. Elucidate. management management in nigeria manage elucidate management in nigeria in nigeria during Elucidate management in Nigeria during the during the okay let's let me just a moment pre industrial period pre industrial now let's not forget it's not post and it's not during the industrial period it is pre pre-industrial period during the pre-industrial period so let's know what it is i think that is okay that is that for that as soon as you have done your assignments, submit it. If you are in a private class, submit it to the private class. And if you are in general class, submit it to general class. So thank you very much, everyone. I look forward to seeing you later this evening. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.